Okay, we have uh, minute approval from the September 18th regular meeting. Uh, I had that one minor change, but beyond that, it looked uh, accurate. You got that, Fred? Yep. They just struck annual meeting because it's the 18th regular meeting. Motion to approve. I'll second. second. John? Yes. PJ? Yes. Mike? Yes. Okay, well, we have a guest tonight, and that's uh, Ed Worso from the Director of uh, the director of Geauga County Libraries. Good evening. Ed, you have the floor. Okay. Well, let me say hi first. Good to meet you. How are you doing? Good. Good. Good to meet you. Thanks for having us for a second. No problem. Good to meet you. I have uh, a board member with me, Raymond Rendelli, and a marketing manager, uh, let me get over here, Lori Weber. Uh, so, uh, I'm sure you've all read in the paper that we have a half mill bond issue on the uh, ballot in November. It's issue four. It is to build some new buildings in the county to repair the existing structures and to uh, potentially acquire land if we need it in the process for what we want to do for the buildings. First order business. Of the two buildings that we would need would be Bainbridge, a new Bainbridge library, and a new Thompson station. Because Thompson is about to probably be booted out of its location, so we're going to have a building with no heat, no electricity. Uh, we won't be able to serve the folks in the northeast corner of the county. And Bainbridge has had issues since, gosh, I tell the story now. There's a PowerPoint on my computer from 1999 when Debbie O'Connor first started talking about the need for a new Bainbridge library. And it hasn't changed. I could probably use the same PowerPoint, except that the structure is a lot weaker than it was. The floor sank. The windows are failing. We have a, we have a laundry list of things that are happening. So that's what we've got going on. And I will uh, answer questions to anybody who has anything. Thanks. When was that Bainbridge library built? 1985. It was not commercial grade construction, it was stick construction. It was at the time the most they could build with the money that they could borrow. Apparently, from the reading and the history that I've reviewed, they tried to do a bond issue, targeted bond issue in the area, and it failed. So this was the best they could borrow at the time when interest rates were 18% to build a 10,000 square foot facility to replace the bookstore front that they had. Uh, pre previously, where the, what did they say, the poetry section was in the men's restroom. <laughs> yeah, there's a picture of it. Yeah. Seems kind of poetic. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, do they have any specific plans for what they want to do in Bainbridge, or? Well, we purchased the adjacent property, uh, 2013, 14? 2014, I think. Uh, to the to north. No, yeah. to, 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 well, the, to, to the immediate west, part of west the old, uh, yeah. part of the Chagrin Valley Farms property. This right. old okay. It'll double the space. It'll allow us the opportunity to build something in the new space while maintaining the library that exists until the building is complete, and then move everything and then level the old the old structure. Probably something in the neighborhood of thirty thousand square feet, triple the size. Probably the most populous part of the county, and it's one of the smallest locations. It is the smallest location of a standard location. It's not a station. What would be an anticipated construction cost? Well, we have again. This is we're submitting requests for qualifications for designers. We did a rough out of what we believe it would cost, and roughly we were having about ten million dollars. I've seen thirty thousand square foot buildings for less. So the whole process is going through and looking at what the trends are in libraries, what the construction costs are. The whole reason for doing this at this time is because. We think interest rates are as low as they're going to be. I'm not hitting anyone while I'm sitting here. Interest rates are as low as they're going to be. Construction costs were going to be the lowest they were until we had a couple of catastrophes happen. And I think materials construction will probably fluctuate. But when we started this planning a year ago, this is what what the the ground looked like for us. Okay. All righty. Any other questions for Ed? Thank you. Ed. Who has a library card? I'll ask that. <laughs> yeah. 
Very nice. The rest of you, come see him. I got books in my car. Can I give them to you? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. If you guys got things to go, you know, okay. as exciting as this is, I'm sure you have things that you need to be doing, and so you're, you know, you're welcome to. Well, thank you for. We appreciate you guys. Yeah. Okay. Okay, scheduled reports, Frank Kiktoes. I mean, we all have a copy of uh, September's activities. Uh, we crossed the 17 applications. Pretty well spread out there. Three new accessory buildings, three additions, three fences, one new house, bringing the total new houses for the year to 10. Uh, we do, we will probably have two cases for the Board of Appeals next week. One new one and one case has been, has been continued from the previous month. Um, that's about it. Okay, any questions for Frank? <coughs> and Rick Gordon. Okay, Auburn Township Rural Department Report for September 2017. Preparatory, uh, preparatory work uh, continued on the Taylor and May Road Capital Improvement Project uh, with the township replacing failed driveway culvert pipes. Uh, the final surface was installed mid-month along with striping and burn material, which brings it to completion. There is a punch list, and I know there's a couple items on there, a couple of resident uh, mailboxes that need to be replaced by the uh, contractor. Uh, the resurfacing of Cumberland Trail Firwood Lane and Riverwood Lane was also finished and the first phase of the Auburn Springs Improvement Project has been completed. And that phase is the full depth repair and partial depth repairs that the contractor uh, did in the uh, various uh, resurfaced uh, program that we put on. Uh, the one thing that we are addressing as well, Mr. Edward, you know that I have the pipe in for the cross culvert pipes that we're adding in addition to us here and that will be put in this, uh, uh, this fall. Uh, the new RCP, RCP culvert pipe on Snow Road was installed by Troy Township as per the Geauga County Engineer's design and spec. <clears throat> they have that's off the table there. Uh, stop signs were replaced at Brookfield Drive and Wing Road at Stafford Road due to damage caused by vehicles. We have had some spot vandalism going on in the township, spray paint and stuff like that. We're taking care of the signs as we go. Uh, asphalt patching was done on Crapper Road between State Route 44 and Auburn Road. Um, the Auburn Community Park driveway received a final lift of 404 asphalt and burn material. Uh, time was allocated as well for the preparation uh, for the bicentennial celebration held at the park, which my department had uh, quite a bit to do there prior to the opening of that celebration. And I think it was a success, and actually my guys were the ones up there echoing that this should be an annual Let's event. do it again next year. Yeah, I was covering that up. up. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was wonderful. Team office plan. Uh, Auburn Lakes Drive had the berm repaired and filled with material as well. Uh, and footers were installed in the cemeteries, and we are currently up to date on footers. And the split rail PJ's in. Yes. And that's in as per uh, what we discussed with Mr. Simpson there. Um, what we're going to be doing here soon is Mr. Everly and I will huddle up within the next couple of weeks and review our five-year road plan. Uh, once again, we'll tweak it where needed and we'll take this to the engineer's office and review with them as well. And then we'll have our uh, PowerPoint sometime later in the winter. And that's what I got. Hey, thank you, Emmer. Any questions for Mr. Gordon? Mr. Eberle. Uh, one thing, Emmerich, did, we did meet as a board with Troy Township trustees discussing our sharing of roads, shaw, and snow. Uh, we did come to a kind of a, a verbal agreement there to write this up, but uh, we're going to continue to take care of the entire length of Shaw Road for as far as snow plowing and salting. And uh, they will uh, uh, take care of the entire length of Snow Road. Uh, each of us will maintain our respective sides of the road as far as ditching, tree removal, and uh, we will share the costs of any upcoming cross culverts 50-50. Uh, we did 
point out a few things that we've already, you know, Shaw wrote already, we replaced all those culverts with concrete a long time ago. Uh, but I think uh, uh, when we do our annual crack sealing, we're going to send them, give them an opportunity, we're going to send them the copy of the quote, but give them an opportunity to, if they want to crack seal the road themselves, they can do it. But I think we're going to insist that it probably be keep, keep being done like it has for the last <coughs> four times, three times. Yeah, four times. Four times that uh, we have that hired out. It's been done super. It really makes a difference. As we know, crack ceiling is the most important thing. Keep that road. Uh, I don't know that that's their first priority each year to crack seal. So. Uh, but anyway, it was a fruitful meeting. I think everybody agrees, and uh, it's always nice to go out and uh, visit our friends. So, uh, one thing Emmer failed to to point out, but we kind of were operating under a one arm tied behind our back here most of the summer. We had some people with health issues, and uh, we still got all the projects in, and. Uh, it's been a little difficult, and then we threw in a couple of days of prep for the bicentennial. And uh, but I think everybody have to agree that the bicentennial was just a rousing success. So all their efforts were uh, very well received. And we got an, uh, an estimate from the uh, uh, police on duty that uh, I mean about 500 plus visitors. Right. In the course of the six hours, oh, so. that was all that. I think we had all that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. yeah. It was. Uh, matter, uh, matter of fact, crew thought it was very well organized. They were kind of a they nice. They were very impressed. They were a nice star to come flying in. That uh, always draws a crowd, and uh, it was nice of them to stick around for almost an hour yeah. and uh, get everybody a chance to peek inside one of those. Uh, uh, choppers and one of the interesting things is is that thing's fitted with these new rotor blades <coughs> that barely make noise. I mean, they're making you can hear the engine of the chopper, but when those the blades you don't hear the noise that you hear on the old style blades. And uh, uh, I think that was real real interesting to watch them land and take off again. Uh, it's more interesting is to watch all the kids' faces. Yeah, as it starts coming in, you got every little little cherub face is just staring at that thing, waiting for it to land and run it up. There. <coughs> Back to that Troy meeting, I'm right. Um, you know, I I think what's important here too, and I think we made that clear out there, is that people that live on the west side of uh, Snow Road are as much Auburn as anybody that lives in Auburn Lakes, and we got to get as fair a treatment to everybody as we can. And they do have a new contractor out there do their snow plowing. They don't have a, their own road department. And you did get that number and yes, name and yeah, everything yeah, yeah. from them. I think we probably ought to touch base with them before it snows mm -hmm. and just, you know, not that we're watching, but these are Auburn residents paying Auburn. This truck basically has right. one truck and one driver and then they subcontract one truck and one driver? No. Uh, the contractor was uh, um, Boomer, Bobby, Bobby, and he went out with two trucks. Uh, okay, so they don't have a truck, do they? No, no, they don't have. Burton has one truck. Oh, they 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 yeah. They're both contractors. Yeah, so they don't have two, and it's my understanding that this uh, new contractor will have about the same. I hope it works. Yeah. I hope it works. So yeah. I'll touch base prior to winter with him as well. So he needs a hand down there. Okay, that's about it. Now we're gonna stay on that same other meeting theme because. We saw way too much of each other that week. Uh, Chagrin Watershed Partners had uh, uh, one of their business meetings, and I, I think those are quarterly. I know the executive committee meets, meets more often, but uh, we held that up. We hosted that up at Adam Hall. It went over very well. They had, uh, uh, I'm going to say probably 50 to 60 people there, maybe. Um, <coughs> Covered the same top, you know, the topics that they do, their programs and whatnot, and spoke with uh, Heather Elmer afterwards, and um, she's encouraging us, as I brought up last year, to go ahead and 
make a follow-up uh, application with NatureWorks, which got our playground mm -hmm. finished up. Uh, we've been talking about a pavilion of some type up there, and uh, we started the conversation. Of course, last year, you remember, there was Newberry, Munson, and us were in on it, then Munson backed out. Newberry's project up the road here was funded, and so was ours. And we're trying to figure out who's going to make application this year, but there's a possibility of. Uh, she encouraged me to get after it, so that's what we're going to do. Um, and that worked very well last year. We actually closed that out in almost record time. Uh, KCE meeting. We'll bring that up. We met with Bainbridge Township and the Kenton School Board. Um, each of us, one third owners of. Kenston Community Ed, Auburn Bainbridge Rec Board appointments. Uh, thought that meeting was productive enough. It's kind of like you stay on top of this so things don't get away like they have in years past. Uh, Ten years ago there were some problems there that seemed to be corrected. I think we got great staff up there. Um, one thing I was impressed with is uh, they moved into the old Gardner School, which is uh, about a third, well, almost half of that was torn down for the transportation department. Uh, the remaining facility is large. I think it's all KC. There's some storage going on there now, but I think that's over. Well, that one room, I think, is a shared room. It had some kind of a name to it. I'm not they were storing some it stuff for sure. Yeah, that was like mm -hmm. the big meeting room. They still yeah. have the basketball court there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some individual rooms. Uh, a lot of individual rooms. It's it's going to work well, um, you know. And Jennifer Ingram uh, pointed out that you know we've been here now getting close to a year, yeah. and they're looking at some staffing differences, uh, which I think is good. I mean, you, you don't instead of jumping in with both feet and hiring people for you move, they're seeing how things work first, and then about 45 minutes later, Nancy Santilli says, you know, we ought to look at staffing. Yeah. So, <laughs> I think Jennifer's on the ball there, yeah. and I. I I think she does a fantastic job. Um, you know, there was. The, do, do you need to have that meeting? Well, yeah, you kind of do once. Yeah, in a you while. do. I think yeah. it's important to remind everybody that what the what the pecking order is, and uh, it, it even seemed a little surprising. A couple of people seemed a little puzzled, but uh, basically reiterating the role that each each party has rep. If that party has a issue, they need to take it to their rep. The rep needs to take it to the KCE board. If that KCE board says, no, we're not going to act on this, then, and they want to pursue it, they need to, that the complaint party's got to get another one of the three owners to go with them because it's uh, one third isn't going to tell two thirds how, how the place is going to operate. And, uh, we had to state that a couple times, but I happen to know that's how it was originally set up because I worked with Bob Lee and Jerry Marino and uh, to set up that procedure. So uh, I sometimes think was, people get a little excited, forget they have two other partners. I think it was good too for all the party to see, just sit down and see what the magnitude of that organization is. I mean, they've yeah. got well over 100 individual programs, um, all the sporting programs, uh, and you know, really you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars a year um, revenues that they're taking care of, and they do have a very limited staff, and I think when you, once you look at all those facts and figures, yeah, Jennifer needs to up her staff because she's just, she's got herself spread way too thin. I think I'm familiar with the new facility first. So I, I think she did it, you know, methodically in the right yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> That's all I have, Mike. You want to? You had a chance to look at this before you I. You want to go back, DJ? We'll do it now. Then we've got a, a summary from our uh, party up here, our bicentennial party, which I think we were throwing around some numbers earlier in the year of five, six thousand uh, dollars. Nancy's got this. I know she worked on this a lot today because I taught her halfway through. And she did finish it. We've got uh, 
an event cost of four thousand dollars and four thousand forty four dollars and change uh, you know it's once every two hundred years I think it was well worth it yeah, if you amortize that out over hundred years yeah um, I think there was a, a, a real good attendance on a 90 degree day it's not kind of the day we were expecting but it's uh, we'll take it um, as Emmerich and these guys were up there all day and uh, that was Mark Sturm that came up to me as we were starting to break some stuff down. He says, you know, we should do this again next year. And I think probably that was the consensus of people that stopped in, too. We had a lot of people there that were, uh, you know, not only new to Auburn, we had people that were there at the sesquicentennial, which was kind of cool, you know. And, of course, it never lives up to the one that, from 50 years <laughs> yeah. ago. But, but then again, that's how, yeah, I'm the same way. So... Uh, I think we got to look at some of this stuff that we did this year and where some of these costs are. I think we could probably get this in for, I think we could get a very nice party in the park in maybe around the same time, two weeks after clam bake seemed to work pretty well, I think, uh, for about two thirds of what it cost us this year, give or take. You think? This, this, we did, you know, in 76 for anybody that was around here, we, Auburn did a big bicentennial party too. I was, what, 13 or something. Um, and that went on for four or five years, I'm going to say. We had fireworks over here. Mm -hmm. It pro probably went on until maybe the fire station got built, which I think was 80 or 81, Chief, wasn't it? 78. Well, we, we, the parties were over there. We had, did we uh, use Patty Carlton's? Did we use Patty Carlton's? We set the fireworks off. It went on for a while. It carried on for, for a couple of years. years. Yeah. When did we stop having the circus coming? That was middle 90s. That came in, that was two years. That was maybe yeah. 92 and 3 or something like that. And that drew real well, too. That, that was right around when the community club stopped. It was there. right after that, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, and at South Russell, of course, had all kinds of circus fun this year when they tried to do that. With protesters, well, that's not going to happen. But uh, yeah, I'd like to think maybe if we edit this a little bit, make some changes, we could uh, consider this again next year. Thoughts? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'll yeah, make a party. It's a, it'd be a great idea. I guess we had to know. We 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 went, did a lot of stuff this year. Would probably wouldn't be. You know, on an annual basis, but you don't have to invent the wheel again. Yes. We're going to put the sign back up, but it, there is a one at the door. You know, we couldn't have caught, had that low cost without all the donations from the local businesses. Tons of donations. That we got. I mean, that was... Uh, yeah, $2,400 in donations. That's right. I actually, uh, we had the, the, the giant eagle donated pies and stuff. They didn't even put a dollar value on but that. So we had still gave $2,400 plus some free goods. pies and... So it was very nice that the community came out and helped support the effort for the bicentennial. Of course, the cake is still up here now. That's it's actually built for the 4th of July, and uh, so it seems to be weathering quite well. 4th of July, we took it to the... It's a little bigger than Bill Day, it's hard to cart off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jack wants his tank back. <laughs> uh, the tank, a plastic tank is the middle layer that forms that cake. You pull it around a plastic tank, so uh, uh, which was donated to us. So, yeah, I think it was a great success. We still have one more event. And that's kind of like a driving tour of uh, different spots at some historic, um, more, some more historic than others around the town. And that's in, I can't even think, is that on here for the exact date? No. It's coming up here in a couple weeks, so. Anybody interested in doing it, it's, of course it's free. Don't you have a flyer up over there for that? Can't that? I'm not sure, but I know that's that'll be kind of like the last bicentennial type event. So.
She's got it on the website, I believe. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. That's all I got, Mike. Good. You have your regular reports in front of you. <coughs> Corporation summary report, revenue summary report, and fund status report. Also have the payment listing of warrants 4051 through 4083, totaling $642,182.73. Of note, we have asphalt fabrics and specialties for 192,000, PS construction fabrics for 52,000, Hummel construction for 107,957, and Chagrin Valley paving for $258,324. Um, I have a resolution for supplemental appropriations. We need to appropriate a little bit more money to pay tax collection fees out of the Road and Bridge Fund. Um, those are fees that get paid to the auditor based on the amount of taxes that we bring in. So, uh, I'll read the resolution into the record. Be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of Auburn Township, Java County, Ohio, that the Board finds it necessary to make the following supplemental appropriation of the Road and Bridge Fund. $10,000 to account 2031 330 314 tax collection fees. Okay. Uh, so moved. Second. $1,950 per year. It's the same price, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. no change. We'll make a move to Tire Rubeck Trade to do that, that price. Okay. I'll second. John? Yes. PJ? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, um, we have a change order for asphalt fabrics, uh, a cost decrease of uh, $20,448.35. Chip sale? Chip sale. Chip sale. Okay. What did PS get this year? Oh, um, crack sale. Crack. Okay. And then, uh, <coughs> we got the. <coughs> Engineer's office uh, regarding first and final invoice for the chip seal. Uh, so we recommend they uh, they recommend the payment of the amount of one hundred ninety-two thousand nine fifty one sixty-five. And the bad cost uh, 183,975.90 is Auburn Township, and $8,975.75 uh, will be Newberry. <coughs> so we will pay the whole thing and they get reimbursed by Newberry, or 
Yeah, we're invoicing Newberry. We're invoicing Newberry for that. Okay. Okay, and then we have uh, uh, Spring Valley Paving. Uh, first invoice, uh, $258,324. That's for the paving of various roads. And recommended payment by the engineer's office to go ahead and pay the first invoice. So I'll make that motion. Second. Comment? Going once, going twice. Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. John? Yes. PJ? Yes. Mike? Yes.